Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done the whole YouTube thing. It's kind of been one of those things where it started to feel like more of a job and decided to take a rest on it. And we've been so busy the last year and a half that just wasn't a priority. So all my GoPro stuff, I think it's in that tractor yet and cameras are dead. So just give you a cell phone video, what's been going on. So this fall, this thing, motor blew up in it, shelling horn. Uh, about halfway through, so it's got a reman 83 Cummins in it. Dropped a valve on cylinder number three. So that was an expensive three seconds. So we got that taken care of, and if I remember, I'll try to clip a little video of what it was doing in here. Um, brother's putting transmission in his 7.3. Still got Ferguson. Um, we've still got 275. We picked up a uh, K-Line Speed Tiller high-speed disc this summer off a of, uh, guy up the road that I helped farm. They, they bought a bigger one and trying to find a 15-footer like this was damn near impossible. So we was able to get this one picked up pretty reasonable and we had, got the three point to go down on that thing. We ended up to unhooking all the hydraulic hoses on the cylinders and just pulling on it with the 1586. The, this is no two tractor and up until late November 2022, the three point hitch had never been used on it other than us carrying log chains and stuff on it. So put this, this thing is extremely heavy. So we got this on here to try to loosen that up and got every, we always squirted some grease in it every year, but we really greased it good once we got it to move. Try to work things in. We got this shop ornament back together. I don't know if you'll remember. Uh, bearing went out in the transmission and one of the bearing rollers dropped down below the uh, front gear up there and knocked a hole in the uh, the bottom of the transmission case. I don't know if you can see it right there. We, the best thing we could figure was we picked up the pieces. It was just two pieces and we smeared some JB weld on there. And it ain't leaking from there, but I see we've got a, another leak back here somewhere. And then we, Got the old tile cart pulled out of the weeds because we've got a landlord that's going to start tiling. So we're going to get some mains run on his farm and he's got a mini hoe and he's going to do it himself. And well, I'm sure we'll be over there helping him some, but had to put new hydraulic hoses on the cylinders. This thing opens out and then you put the fence posts through the uh, center of the roll of tile. And then these wheels were seized up real bad so i heated on them with the torch and got them to take new grease so this thing should be ready to go dad and grandpa bought this when i was real little with an old track uh wheeled tile plow and they uh i remember using it when i was real little but it's been sitting in the weeds for a lot of years so we got it out and got it back going uh, soon we're going to be thinking about getting the planter out. I don't think it needs much for steel this year. We've almost traded it, so we're wanting to go to 16 row. But we got to get that out because this isn't going to be pulling the planter anymore. We actually bought a uh, an 80, 8120 John Deere. We got it spoken for verbally, but we have not... Uh, have, haven't signed anything on it yet, so it could still change. You know how those deals go. But I put the hog barn out back. We're on the, we just filled a fourth batch of pigs, so got that going. I uh, haven't really showed much in there because I don't know. I'd like to, but I don't want them animal activists. They can twist that stuff, and I don't know if my integrator wants me to film in there just because. I don't know. We might. I might take you up there and show you, but they just uh, they, they they can spin it the wrong way. So we try to not to take pictures in there. 
but it, it's really cool. I'd like to show it. But what we're doing today is we got this workbench here that just becomes a catch-all. We opened up our loft here. We got a big heavy welding table and built shelves up there. So I'm gonna give this bench to my mom's a boyfriend because it's in the way and it just becomes, we just throw everything on it. And need to get the uh, second 4020 in here and I gotta put them little, all those little rubber boots on for the fuel injectors. That's one of them blue and that, either gonna fix that thing up a little bit and sell it or might put a loader on it. Now you can't decide yet. And then we need to get the 1586 in here and uh, clean it up a little bit. You got a few things to do to it because we're gonna, we get that 8120, we're gonna sell the 1586. As we, 1586 isn't quite what we need anymore. It's slow on the road, not quite big enough for a manure tank. It won't lift that high speed disc. And we're wanting to plant corn with auto steer now. So we uh, found that 8120 wired for auto steer and I'm gonna buy a 2630 screen and a uh, globe off of my cousin that doesn't use one of his anymore. So hopefully we'll be planting with auto steer. So I gotta pull all the monitors out of the 275 there and get them in the new tractor. We don't have it yet. And then DJ's all excited and we, Got rid of our Apache sprayer and got him a 4830 John Deere. So we've been up to a lot. We've picked up a few more acres for uh, 23. So hopefully we can pick up a few more next couple years and keep keep growing with things. Um, got a lot planned for this spring. Over at the other farm, we got a bank barn where we're going to be uh, ripping an addition off of it and rebuilding it just because it's in rough shape and we need it on four foot concrete walls to keep the cattle from tearing the hell out of the siding on the barn and then we've got two used grain bins tore down that we've got to get up here we was going to put up a new 30,000 bushel bin but they're ridiculous right now on price so we're uh we've got some used ones tore down in the barn we're gonna stick them up it won't it won't quite be 30,000 between the two of them, but it'll be close enough for now. And then pick up a few more acres for next couple of years, we'll, build, we'll go ahead and build another new one. But that's what we've been up to around here. So I wanna to try to do a little bit more filming around here. Uh, I don't know. If I get bored with it, I'll probably disappear again. Hey guys, we're here in the hog barn. Well, I don't think I've really showed it on the YouTube. I showed some construction of it, but never really got the finished product project and showed the pigs inside of it yet but got our bin scales there these are hooked to the internet and the feed mill up in Bucyrus can see them and know when they need feed we got 44,000 pounds left in bin two out there which bin which the first two loads are a medicated feed with some extra stuff in it to help get the pigs off to a good start so Bin one we emptied out last night and started on bin two. When it's full, it's got about 46,000 pounds in it. And then they should, I would imagine a load will show up today or tomorrow. They're not using much right now, but they will uh, start bringing regular non-medicated feed for them. But here's the brains of the operations. Of each half the screens, um, one room. So you got the south room where you control everything. And when it's green, it means it's all on automatic. I've got the mister shut off because it's January or February now. But that, that controls everything. And you, you can go into it and get all kinds of information. The low, it's, it, it, it'll trigger an alarm if it gets below 63 degrees in there, which the pigs are level. So we've got it at 71 in one room and 73 in the other and our set point that we want it to try to be is 73.6 but it's nice and comfortable in the barn gives you the temperature in each room and the outside temperature so pigs are comfortable you got the water manifold and had these guys about a week
So we're actually getting ready to go through. I've already done chores this morning, but our service lady from Horde's coming and we got to count how many pigs are in the barn. So that sounds like a lot of counting, but you do it. Each pen's got about 60 in it and you count to 60, 50 times and you're there. But this is the south room and then this is the north room. These triangle pins here are kind of hospital pins. That's an extra pin. Because when we load them in, sometimes we'll get too many in the pins. So we'll, if we gotta cut some out of the pins, we'll bring them here. Got feed in them. You don't wanna drop your phone in here. These here are the ceiling inlets. These will open up, and the, there's a fan down there on the end that's open, and there's one up here. Since it's winter and we're running on minimal ventilation right now, we only run the small fans. But that's all based off the temperature it gets in here. If it gets too hot, it'll kick more on. But obviously, right now we're burning propane running. It's got three big heaters in here. They don't they don't run constantly. It's pretty energy efficient. But they. Uh, they're running, and so we don't want to pull all of our heat out, but we want to keep plenty of fresh air in here. So we got a couple more hospital pins here in the middle, and a couple sort pins here. They're, I guess, half pins. And then, yep, when that, so when that fan and the one up front kicks on, these will open. Right now they open 30%, but in the summertime, when it's hot, all those fans will be running. These will be open 100%. And then the curtain up front will be all the way down. And it'll be tunnel. It's called tunnel ventilation. And there's a nice breeze in here. And it could, it could be really hot outside. And there's a nice breeze in here. It's actually comfortable. So, that's a look in the barn. So well, we, gotta, we gotta get them counted. And then we got some other stuff to do. Well, I wasn't planning on showing you this, but the power's out. It's up here make two generators. Can't quite hear it from my house. I wanted to make sure, but that generator will make sure the pigs stay warm and get plenty of fresh air through there it'll i went in there make sure everything was okay and we're in good shape well guys welcome back to the ohio farm life we got some green iron in the shop now we just picked up this 8120 a week or so ago for planting and replace our 1586 it's got 6600 hours on it LED lights, new hood, new rubber all the way around. It has all three PTOs, which is really nice. We are waiting on the uh, dealer to get here if we got. I got my planter monitor just put in it yesterday, but I gotta get a harness to hook the 2630 to the ATU and to the globe on the cab. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm excited to plant with an 8000 series. There we go, a few things touch up in here and then right next to it was our 4830 sprayer we picked up last fall. We haven't used it yet. We're putting the cab cam in it right now but got 980 hours on it. I didn't think we'd find one that low hours. It's a very clean one. We had to pay dearly for it, but I'm glad we snagged it pre-death. Still got the original tires on it. We got a set of fat ones to put on it. 
Put on them. We're waiting on a jack. It should show up today or tomorrow. It is. It was converted. It's got the new 4640 monitor in it. Now we just got the Green Star Globe for it the other day. That's DJ's new rig.